Now, since this is a televised boxing match, I'm going to be joined by a horribly disfigured former fighter providing barely intelligible commentary throughout. Any thoughts on the fight, Floyd? The name's Jerry Tyson! All right, as you probably guessed by now, today we're going to be talking about the World War III anime. And y'all thought the last video was racist. Is that Isaac? The least interesting man in Dracula's castle. Is that Isaac? The man who changed the smoke detector batteries the least in Dracula's castle. Speaking of which, I briefly mentioned then that there's very few memorable god pantheons in the world. Little did I know, there's an entire Netflix show about that. Record of Ragnarok has all the gods. We got Buddha. We got Zeus. We got Khonshu. We got Elden Beast. We got Jesus, except we don't because he's only in the manga. And what's great is this whole show is just a big ass tournament with one god fighting one human at a time, which means we get to have fun instead of talking about stupid shit like plots or character motivations. But you already know that's not good enough for me, I gotta go one step beyond. So to make things more interesting, I'll be guessing who the winner of each fight is gonna be. And every time I'm wrong, I will be deleting one episode of my Happy Wheels Let's Play series at random. Now obviously an anime that's got as much shit as this going down is gonna need some peak animation. Unfortunately, 10 minutes and 28 seconds into the first episode, they already can't draw a crowd of people sitting down in bleachers. Not a good sign when the fighting hasn't even started yet. Shit, this is a game event in and of itself. Let's play Reverse Where's Waldo. Where isn't Waldo looking ass? Which one of these models is reused the most in this one frame alone? Place your bets now, folks. All right, before I announce the winner real quick, I just wanted to point out that like Kamala Harris and Obama are right here. But uh, the winner is actually gonna be this guy with the armor. You got one, two, three, four, his arm is right here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So yeah. So the first fight is between Thor and Lu Bu. Please note that these guys have whole extra six packs on the sides of their abs. Now Lu Bu may be the best Reaper skin in Overwatch, but let's take a look at Thor because he's got a big ass hammer. And I don't know if you've ever put Lion's Claw on a Giant Crusher and Elden Ring, but if you have, you'll know how fucked Lu Bu is right now. Why does everybody think we fucked? Cause we did. Now come here. Before the battle though, we finally figure out who the hell these two people are. They showed up right before the gods were just gonna kill all the humans and brought out the constitution. Just THE constitution, you know the one. And yeah, under section C, page 2, clause 24, the gods have to summon the greatest warriors across all of time and space to represent humanity, and give them special weapons to fight whatever god they're matched with. And just remember, all of the gods collectively forgot they were supposed to hold this tournament every thousand years, but they didn't have any problem holding a NATO summit to decide to just blow up the earth. Good thing these two showed up to remind them. They're sisters, by the way, and they add a great smasher pass element to an otherwise sausage fest of an anime. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick! And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. So Thor winds up his lion's claw. I was fucking kidding, by the way, but whatever. The way he just stops halfway through it is so stupid. You're not Boa Hancock, bro. But then we get his flashback where he kills a bunch of giants in Asgard. But when he does the attack in the flashback, they don't show it. But it's okay. They're leading up to him using it on Lubu. Right? Oh, well. Uh... I guess that's the end of that. What do you mean, that's the end of that? I didn't see a damn thing! I want you to imagine for a second if this wasn't Thor and he didn't control lightning. Imagine if this shot was just far as fuck away for no reason. Like, no one wins in a directing situation like that. What, are you censoring the brutality of the impact so China stays tuned to watch Lu Bu still get his ass beat? I can tell you what this really means. It means... China has successfully killed the Wither and now has the resources necessary to activate a beacon. Then Lubu gets back up, which of course means it's time for his flashback. We gotta give the guys on YouTube who edit down the fight to just the attacking something to do. And yeah, you're gonna catch on pretty early how much they love doing this. Pretty much every time something does or is about to happen, they cut away from it so they can take a break from animating the fight. Two beings born and raised in different times. Long before time had a name, the first Spinjitzu master created Ninja. Now to be fair, it's not like this is the only show that does that. In fact, I'd maybe go as far to argue this show fits it in better than most. And what's weird is, I don't know how to explain it, but it feels like a Saturday morning cartoon. Not just the cutaways either, everything about the series. And I kinda love it. There's a lot of really unapologetically random shit like how everyone has phones in the lands of the gods. That's literally so funny I can't even laugh at it. It's like you take Dragon Ball Z, the quintessential Saturday morning anime, and add everything that's watered down the recipe for anime since the 90s and this is exactly what you get. And yes, it is a little sad when I put it like that. Anyways, Thor decapitates Lubu with his hammer. 
Holy shit. Bro got the damn seal clubbing treatment. Do it now! Destroy the sea! You know, normally I'd be wrong with my predictions since you would think humanity would win in the first match just to show that they can. But now nah, this is actually getting interesting. Let's see who's next. <laughs> Zeus is gonna win. Like, obviously. There's not a single anime where an old dude isn't stronger than you think he is. And adding to the DBZ parallels, he powers up like the exact same way Master Roshi does. They even act the same stereotypical way, except for when they don't, because the writers forgot he's supposed to be a horny old man after episode 6. I will give them credit and point out, though, this is probably the best fight in the show, so they at least compensate for it. But moving on, Poseidon versus... I don't fucking remember his name, dude. Does it really matter? I want to say that this show does a great job with character designs, except for this part. This guy looks cool as fuck. He's got a little bit of that Demon Slayer Arizona Tea Samurai drip going on. But what I don't understand is why Poseidon has to look this stupid. When Pop Tropica Poseidon looks cooler than you, there's a problem. I'm honestly not even gonna bet on this fight. Like, Happy Wheels episode 63, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to take one for the team. And after that, Hercules fights Jack the Ripper and they start playing ACDC. <laughs> And yeah, without even looking, I already know I'm not the first person to point that out, but... Come on, still. That is some invincible Overwatch levels of ripping off a theme song. Imagine getting brutally mutilated by someone in an alleyway and 130 years later someone makes an epic TV show about him fighting a Greek god. The question here is who would win in a fight between Hercules and Jack the Ripper? The problem with that question being, it's pretty hard to gauge the power level of Jack. You could write him anywhere between being just some dude with a knife to a precision surgeon that damn near comes prepackaged with x-ray vision to cut all your vital nerves and shit. Wasn't Jack collecting women's uteruses or was that... That might have been the Black Butler Jack, actually, never mind. Either way, that's why you don't write someone like that into the show. Oh, look. Now that it's season two, they're starting to use CGI in the fights now. Wow. That's awesome. That's what I need to start doing in these videos. I'm not even gonna say anything when I see CGI anymore. I'm just gonna play that clip of Kanye. Like, I completely skipped over talking about the one time they use it for animation in season one. <laughs> because, you know. How am I even supposed to get mad at that? Then we get Jack the Ripper's backstory and Chef Boyardee squares up on him. And yeah, apparently the reason he became a serial killer is because his mom was a prostitute waiting for the dude that said he'd come back and get her up out of the hood. And some way or another she decided to not get her hole scraped. If you catch my nautical drift. And the kid they had was born with white hair, even though neither of them had white hair. Then she finds out what pillow talk is and goes crazy, talking some, uh, I wish I had gotten another abortion. Bitch, be glad you got the option. The fuck is you talking about? They're I live in America. We can't sell our bodies dog. or get an abortion. The fuck else is we supposed to do? The government got us looking like a third world country compared to... What, Victorian England? So naturally, Jack kills his mom. For your ultimate test of trust and transparency, permit your partner to peruse your phone. Oh, absolutely not, Jigsaw. This is utterly preposterous. That was actually not a bad flashback, honestly. Especially compared to how boring the last matchup was. I know we're done with that fight, but can I go on the record and say I would have preferred they just cut that whole thing out of the series and had this as the third one? At least the Greek god they pull in this time doesn't have the personality of a sack of potatoes. We got Hercules and his 100% heterosexual childhood friend. See, back in the day, he decided to drink the blood of Zeus, and that launches into a whole nother Netflix show I haven't even seen yet. Either way, it's not as good as Jack's back story, but then again, what is? I can't wait to tell mother about the cheese I found. <laughs> Now, real quick, let's talk about the balancing in this show, since it's almost the funniest thing ever. Normally, the human contenders get one singular weapon that's as strong as a god's weapon, and assuming equal physical strength and magical abilities are in play, it's a fair fight. The thing is, that way of writing holds for like 90% of the first two fights. Then they test their luck when what's-his-name's sword gets cut in half and he just... picks up the broken off part and makes a handle out of sheer willpower cool. Then we got Jack, and he's just got gloves that let him turn whatever he touches into a weapon. Like, he could toss out a pizza and cut your head off with it. Which sounds fun on paper, but then you take into account he's fighting Hercules, the guy whose name is literally synonymous with beating the shit out of everything. Meanwhile, Jack just looks like a gust of wind could finish him off. Basically, if he had any other weapon, he'd probably lose, but because he got the weapon that's every weapon at once, yeah, I guess he would win, huh? Hercules could have been fighting a three-year-old and had a chance of losing if it threw a tennis ball in his general direction with those 
things on. And you know, I'm actually gonna stop predicting the winners after this shit, because they try to trick you into thinking it's not even the gloves that's giving him the power-ups at first. I'm not about to entertain that stupid-ass plot point by wasting my breath explaining it either. It's whatever, because honestly, the next fight is ten times stupider. Fucking grape-flavored Goro versus this guy. We had Jack the Ripper, the greatest serial killer of all time, and now we got What's-His-Face, the greatest rapist of all time. Does that mean you wanna play a game of Hide the Weasel? <laughs> If there is anyone who is genuinely mad at me skipping over this fight, I'll make a whole separate video about it. But for the time being, this shit's so boring, I literally can't be bothered. Alright, last one. Buddha versus Zero Fuku. I'm still waiting on one Fuku. They set up really early on that people don't like Buddha at all. I don't mind him. I'm surprised he has hair and a fucking e-girl tank top on, but besides that, I don't really care. I need to borrow this thing too. I'm going to commit great crime. I'm going to bust nut in water down. But yeah, he's technically a god and a human at the same time, so the gods get mad when he fights for the humans. But that doesn't make any sense, because Hercules did the same thing except in reverse. Speaking of which, Buddha is also tied for the gayest flashback next to Hercules. Siddhartha. The, this life I lived, who did it belong to? I speak to my people, but I do not know the taste of the roasted beans they eat. Bruh, if... If you want beans, just go get beans. What are you talking about? Then there's this Japanese god that's actually seven gods, except it's one god that turned into seven gods, but it might be eight. And if that wasn't confusing enough, this isn't even his final form. And it was about here when I realized the thing about this show. For every interesting fight, you must suffer through a boring one. Perfectly balanced, as all anime character rosters should be. And while I'm at it, let me go ahead and cap off this three-year-long arc of my channel where I hate side characters. Uh, let me first off tell you about the Grabbler. The Grabbler? The Grabbler. <laughs> he I likes like... to take things. As you can obviously imagine, this video was originally going to be a review of Baki, because who the fuck would ever pick Record of Ragnarok as their first and foremost tournament anime? In Baki, you basically have the son of the devil training to beat him, and he has to do some pretty insane shit to get into shape to do it. You realize how dangerous that place can be. Ando, I know. It would be like sending a child on the streets of New York to fend for himself. It would be like sending a child to the streets of Tampa, Florida to fend for himself. But yeah, basically that show's second season is just one long-ass tournament. Most of which is like 20-odd episodes of people you've never heard of before fighting each other and the show feeding you their backstory, since it's a bracket-style system and the main character can't literally fight everyone. But apart from like two or three of them, it's perfect. Everyone has exactly enough time to get you to care about them. Like, I was unironically invested in a show that starts off with this. But yeah, that's a tournament done right. We basically perfected it back in 2001. But except for that one Indian guy, you don't really see a lot of people talking about that. Usually when I hear someone say tournament in a conversation about anime, they're either pretending Giguk was ever funny, or they're just genuinely discussing a tournament arc in an anime that isn't usually that formal with the fighting. Some that come straight to mind would have to be Akira Toriyama phoning in character designs the animated series, the original worst season of My Hero Academia, or the tuning exams. There is no joke for the tuning exams. We take that arc very seriously here. But what I'm getting at is you very rarely see an entire show that's a tournament from start to finish. And watching Record of Ragnarok, you can start to see why. Now, all that said, I will reiterate this anime does have a certain charm to it. The gods have fucked with the human race for far too long. Now's the best time for them to kick their asses. Uh. You did not just say fuck. That's one of my favorite anime clips ever, by the way. And again, the key word is unapologetic. But even then, besides the first season, I can't really recommend this shit. What you have to understand is that I rate these shows depending on how well they fulfill their premise. Like, if you read the synopsis of an anime and start getting pictures in your head of what could happen, and nothing is as cool as what you imagined, yeah, you fucked up. That's a bad show. That's why people with zero imagination think that horrible shows are good. This could probably be the last video I ever upload. I think I'm pretty much hitting every single point of why I made this channel in the first place. This is a series about gods fighting humans with weapons that are actually angel waifus. And they somehow figured out a way to allow that to be boring. 5 out of 10. The name Jerry Tyson!